Good morning. Today is Tuesday the 15th of June and we're in the 11th week of the Church's Ordinary Time. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is a ferry and we'll follow the ordinary readings of the day. We pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The first reading we continue in uh, the letter to the Corinthians, here with the beginning of chapter 8. Now here, brothers, is the news of the grace of God, which was given in the churches in Macedonia, and of how, throughout great trials by suffering, their constant cheerfulness and their intense poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity. I can swear that they gave not only as much as they could afford, but far more, and quite spontaneously, begging and begging us for the favour of sharing in this service to the saints. And what was quite unexpected, they offered their own selves first to God and under God to us. Because of this, we have asked Titus, since he has already made a beginning, to bring this work of mercy to the same point of success among you. You always have the most of everything, of faith, of eloquence, of understanding, of keenness for any cause, and the bigger share of our affection. So we expect you to put the most into this work of money too. It is not an order that I am giving you, I am just testing the genuineness of your love against the keenness of others. Remember how generous the Lord Jesus was. He was rich, but he became poor for your sake, to make you rich out of his poverty. The word of the Lord. The Gospel is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5. We continue the Sermon of the Mount. Jesus said to his disciples, You have learned how it was said, You must love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I say this to you, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. In this way you will be sons of your Father in heaven, for he causes his Son to rise on bad men as well as good and his reign to fall on honest and dishonest men alike. For if you love those who love you, what right have you to claim any credit? Even the tax collectors do as much, do they not? And if you save your greetings for your brothers, are you not doing anything, are you doing anything exceptional? Even the pagans do as much, do they not? You must therefore be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. I want to begin by picking up that phrase in the opening prayer. Without you, with our mortal frailty, we can do nothing. And we recognise that our mortal frailty, the fact that we're both body and soul, and our body will have a short life and then die, um, and the spirit depends how we've lived our lives will go on in one way or another. The Church is saying we need to turn to Christ to receive the grace to grow. And we've got confidence that we have turned to Christ. In our baptism, we're part of the family of God. So the grace is there for us, and we're being encouraged to pick up on it by our actions, by our prayer, by our love for God and by our love for neighbour. And that picks up in the next in the two readings. The first reading is all about a collection that uh, Paul wants to make among the Corinthians to take back with him to Jerusalem, especially to f feed and help the non-Jewish converts to Christianity. So he, he gives them a comparison and says, the new Christians in Macedonia, who were very poor, gave so generously, like the widow's might, they gave a bit of everything they had, plus a bit more just how generous they were. And then Paul reminds them that God's love for them and above all the love shown them by Jesus in his uh, suffering, passion, death and resurrection is God's overwhelming love, way beyond 
any love we can give in return. And therefore we can show our return of love by being generous in making this collection for the, the Christians in Jerusalem. Um, all through the second letter of Corinthians, this question of collections comes up, and it comes up in other of Paul's writings as well. Because when he was told, you are the apostle to the Gentiles, one of the conditions he was told, you must never forget the poor. And so he's always making these collections to bring back to Jerusalem as best he can. Then the Gospel continues the contrasts Paul, that um, Jesus makes. And here, nowhere do you actually find the phrase, you must hate, love your neighbour, hate your enemies. Nowhere do you find the hate your enemies bit. But the, it's put in to magnify the change of heart needed by the followers of Christ. So that we're called to go way beyond what is ordinary in this world. Jesus gives the example of how to even tax collectors, the bad people, uh, love their families and love their friends. But we must love our enemies, we must love the bad people. And he gives us the example that um, God's rain and God's sun shines down and falls down upon the, the good and the bad, um, the deserving and the undeserving. And we're called to give and to give constantly to those who, in the world's eyes, in our eyes, may be the bad people, the undeserving people. But we're to take the first step, we're to be the ones who initiate the peace treaties, to give up rights in order to get uh, an agreement going. It's always a challenge being a Christian, and certainly trying to bring peace to our world and being the ones who take the first step is very demanding. We turn to our bidding prayers. The response is, Christ be mindful of your people. By shedding his blood for us, Christ gathered together a new people from every corner of the earth. Let us pray to him. Christ be mindful of your people. Christ our King and Redeemer, help us to know your power and your love. Christ, be mindful of your people. Christ, our hope and courage, sustain us through the day. Christ, be mindful of your people. Christ, our refuge and strength, fight with us against our weakness. Christ, be mindful of your people. Christ, our joy and solace, stay with the poor and lonely. Christ, be mindful of your people. And Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, to whom this world with all its goodness and beauty belongs, give us grace joyfully to begin this day in your name and to fill it with an act of love for you and our neighbour. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. All the best. Have a good day. Let's go.